Huh. So, cheers. Blood limit. 15 year French cask. Just gonna have a draft before I go to bed. So, I just got home from watching Ender's Game. Okay, before I get into spoilers, let me just say this. I did like it. I'm trying to figure out where to rank it. That's why I've got this thoughtful look on my face. Also, cheers. So, do I recommend people go see it? Yes. If you're fans of the book, and I admit I do rather like the book, despite my objections to certain Orson Scott card writing since then, in particular, in particular his uh, recent web output, um, yeah, it's quite enjoyable. If you like sci-fi, go see it. And if, of course, if you're a fan of Ender's Game, go see it. Okay. Still trying to figure out where to rank it amongst the movies I've seen this year. Maybe I'll just have to do that later. It's very good. It's one of the better movies I've seen this year, but it's not my favorite. Okay, so I'm from here on out, I'm going to assume that you have read the book. Spoilers. Big letters. Spoilers. If you don't want to know any more about the book, about the movie, or you haven't read the book, or even if you've read the book but don't want to know what's in the movie, stop watching. It's good. Not perfect, but it's quite good. Okay. So, let's just, as I said, you know what's in the book. Obvious comparisons. What did they change? Well, for one, uh, yeah, Ender still has his monitor in, but they kind of made it say, yeah, we're training kids with video games. They actually flat out said that. And it's not quite in the book, but that that's like right at the beginning, so I can, I can live with that. That didn't bother me that much at all. The Peter and Valentine subplot where they're essentially committing political, uh, not espionage, that's not the term, subterfuge via weblogs, that is more or less, no, sorry, that is all cut. That is not in the film at all. It concentrates entirely on the battle school and command school. Uh, in fact, Peter, Peter really only appears in one scene. And that's just to establish that he seriously bullied Ender around. They allude to him a little bit, said, okay, this is where I got my toughness from, but this is a guy who essentially taught me not never to back down, to keep going until there can't be a counterattack. But Peter himself is in one scene. Valentine doesn't fare that much better. She's in two more. Actually, I guess Peter kind of is in one more. Uh, that would be with respect to the game that he plays, how the queen feeds into the game. But uh, So he's there, but it's not really him, so I don't really count it. Peter himself only appears in one. And Valentine is in two and a half, let's call it, because, you know, there's one where uh, the colonel played by, I apologize, I can't remember everybody's name, but the colonel played by Harrison Ford comes down and takes her to see Ender. That scene's still there. Drastically cut down, of course, but... So whether you count that as one scene, you know, him showing up at the house and then at the lake, or two, yeah, that's minor. Uh, what else has changed? 
They do kind of rush through the battle school quite a bit. Uh, you don't really get a feel for the tactics that they're going to be using. In fact, uh, feet down is kind of only mentioned, or the enemy's gate is down is only mentioned like once in the final battle where they're facing two armies. And they're given like zero notice about it. Uh, whereas I'm pretty sure, it's been a while since I've read the books, but I'm pretty sure that was an established strategy of Dragon Army right from the get-go that they would go feet down. Still, the battle scenes they had at Battle School are still very well staged. I rather enjoyed them. In fact, I rather enjoyed... All the acting in this movie is pretty solid, and I kind of stopped sloshing this around and actually finished drinking it. Um... Yeah, the kids are fine, so if anybody was worried about the kids, don't. don't. They're, they do well at playing kids. Somewhat mature kids, but that kind of works in the context, and they still have their immature moments, so. Uh, yeah, for some reason, Command School, it, rather than, I believe, in the books, it's just in orbit around Jupiter, or further out in the solar system, but instead, here, it's on a actual formic, former Formic colony planet. Damn. Yeah, that's one of the major changes that kind of bugs me, just because that's his excuse for finding the Queen Cocoon at the end. He goes, the command school is on that planet, and after the climax, he, in the book, I believe he travels around for a bit before he finds the planet that has the cocoon on it. Here, they're on this former Formic colony planet. He, like a, just a day or so after the climax, he runs outside, having been told, you know, you'll need a breather and all that, and, uh, I'm sorry, I forget the I forget the character's name. She, good actress, uh, the female, the girl on his uh, battle squadron. Um, she runs outside with him, and uh, why why are they letting him run outside like this, and you know not checking him afterwards? But he runs outside, and that's where he has an encounter with an old queen who is still alive and on this planet. All he, all her children or. All the other Formix on the planet having left when the humans supposedly drove them off. She's still there. She's guarding the Queen Cocoon, which Ender then takes, and he immediately goes to, you know, make peace with everybody, find the new home planet for them. And that it in itself opens up a huge plot hole in the film where hey, why are you not searching him when he comes back? Like, how did he get that cocoon back inside the base, swarming with military personnel, and nobody has checked him for this thing? I just hit the microphone. Hopefully that didn't make too loud a sound. I've got to stop talking with my hands. Uh... So that's much less plausible than it is in the book. And that's what has me going, how much did I like this? Because that's a rather severe plot hole. Um, but yeah, overall, liked it. Liked it quite a bit. Can't say I loved it. Let me put it that way. I'm trying to figure out where I'm, where I'm going to rank it. Uh, if anybody follows me on Facebook, they, you might have seen my list of movies I've seen this year with a ranking of what I thought of them. But uh, no, I'm not going to share that here. If you know who I am, find me. Let me know who you are on YouTube, and I'll probably accept your friend request. Uh, possibly. I'm not guaranteed. I need to kind of know you and have dealt with you for a while before I actually accept. Um, I'm sorry. Rob, if you see this, I prefer Glenn Livett to Glenn Fittich. Cheers. 
Eh, anyway, I think I'll sign off. I've got to go to bed. So, talk to you later, everybody. Oh, this is just a random video. Bye.